Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Mr. Media tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at a few quick tips on using the Polyline tool inside of Fusion, inside DaVinci Resolve. This is one of those tools that you're going to be using all the time in Fusion, so these few little tips will make that process just a whole lot easier and more fun. So, inside Fusion, you can see we've got a little comp, we're not going to make anything too pretty, so sorry about that. So the first thing that we have is we have two different options. We have the Polygon and the B-Spline option. So first we'll lay down a Polygon, and you can also, of course, access this with Control Space, and then polygon but it's nice to have these in the little shelf here so now if we select this we can go ahead and just draw a little shape here looking good and you see right away whenever we click if you aren't familiar with polylines when you click and drag you get these little handles on the side and you see that it determines the the curve that it makes so the longer they are the slopier the curve the shorter they are the sharper the curve so got that and then if you want to close them up we can click and you see we get the little O icon there. I'm not sure if you can see on the screen, but you see the cursor changes. Or you can hit Shift O, and then that also closes it up. And there's also a button up here for closing the line. So now you can be sure that you've got it all the way closed. And like, because sometimes if you're like zoomed way out and you're doing it, you might not be sure that the line's closed. So Shift O, it's a good little tip. First tip, Shift O, close the line. Now you've got this, and you can see this point doesn't have smooth edges on it. You see that they are sharp like that. So we can smooth those out just by going to our smooth and making sure that we have the correct point selected over here because you saw that I clicked in the wrong window so make sure you go to smooth and then there it goes right like that and if you want to make it sharp and linear there's that again and if you want to do that to all of them the first thing you need to do is you can select them all by clicking and dragging and selecting but if you have a lot of polylines that can get a little bit annoying so another way you think control a would work but that doesn't work you have to hit shift a so shift A is to select all the points and then you can make them linear if you want to or soft or you can hit shift A and then hold down control and drag and you can, you know, unselect certain points. So if you have like one thing that you want to stay anchored, then you can get shift A and then you can remove that one point. So nice and easy. And now let's say you want this mat to be soft. We can do that over here with the soft edge control. So you can see that showing up over here. It won't show up with just the line viewer, unfortunately. But if you view the actual mask, then the soft edge will show up over here. But if you want to do something like pervertex feathering, like you can do in After Effects or in many other things, then you can actually just go over here and enable the make double poly. You see it just turns green for now. But if we click on here and drag out, you can see, in this case, we clicked on the actual line. So if we click on this green part of the line, which is now red, the dotted part, you can see over in our mask viewer, we get this nice feathering out part. So if you're doing rotoscoping or something like that, or even motion graphics, then you can see this nice pervert text feathering. And it, can of course, and it can, of course, also come inside too. So let's grab the correct line here. So if you're going inside, you want to grab the solid line and bring it in and leave the dotted line on the outside. And for going outer, you grab the dotted line and go outside. But maybe we want to animate, and there's some ways to do that a little bit faster. So it automatically, when you put it down, puts down a keyframe, and then you start moving stuff after that. Let's go ahead and select these guys and move them out, and you can see it drops down a keyframe automatically. So between those two, we get a nice little interpolation, and maybe you want to, in this one, bring them out more. But what if you want to do something more complex, like maybe just rotate this edge? Well, let's scoot forward some. And there's actually a really nice way of doing this. And this is, if you've ever used Blender, it's pretty similar to that. Just using some different key bindings. So you select all these that we want to move. And then to rotate, or in this case, twist, you hold down the T key. And then you click and you drag. And you see this is pivoting from where I clicked down with my cursor. So this can be really powerful and really help things out. So you see if I do the same thing, click and drag on this side, it rotates in a different direction. Or you can click in the middle. And you can click anywhere you want and do this. So this is super nice. So I recently rotoscoped the shot with a wing in it, and the wing pivoted from just a point. So I could click on that point and made it a lot faster to roto that and just go through and do it like that. And you can do the same thing with scale. So there's hold down X, click and drag, and scale on the X axis. Hold down Y, click and drag, and scale on the Y axis. Hold down S, click and drag, and you can just scale on both axes. So there's that. We can Shift A. S, click and drag. You can also modify this with the normal transform bounding box you would normally. So here's shape box, which is also shift B. And you can click and drag this around just like you would normally, which makes it pretty nice. You see that one point isn't selected here. So let's go ahead and shift A, make sure that everything's selected. 
and then hit shift B. And now you can see we've got our whole bounding box. So that is pretty nice. Now you can see we've got this great animation going. And now let's pop down a quick B spline and just see the little difference. So all these tools work the same way. It's just the actual spline functions a little bit differently. So you can see you're putting down points and then the curve sort of tries to get as close as it can to all the points. So this is really good for really smooth shapes. So let's maybe do one of these guys and hit shift O and see what it does there. So you can see these are both used for different things. And so just like before, if you select a couple points and hit T, you can rotate them around and do all those same functions as before. You can make it a double and do our same stuff. And if we view this guy, you can see, let's put this the other way, looking good. So there you go. Those are a few quick tips for using the uh, polyline and B-spline tools inside Fusion. This is a tool, like I said, you're going to be using all the time. It's one of those foundational things that learning a few things to speed up your process really helps out a lot. So there's a couple little keyboard shortcuts, T for twist, X for scaling on the X, Y for scaling on the Y, S for scale. You've got the bounding box, you've got your shift O to close out your shape. And, you know, you're good to go. So anyway, I hope you like this little quick tips tutorial. If you liked it, be sure to give it a like. If you didn't give it a dislike, no matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below and tell me what other tutorials you want to see. Because with Division Resolve 15, there's a whole wide world of possibilities out there. So let your imagination soar. Also, be sure to check out meastermedia.com slash products. We've got all sorts of good stuff. We've got LUTs and light leaks and uh, the Atmospheres pack is very cool. And people are liking that. And that's great for some motion graphics stuff inside of Fusion. So I'm sure I'll be doing some tutorials on that. There's a free version of that, so there's no harm in just going over and picking it up. So, once again, I've been Theo with Meester Media. Have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.